it has been said that the church of Jesus Christ is always one generation from extinction. Please think about that. That the church of Jesus Christ is always one generation from extinction. It's been said that God has no grandchildren. Only children. And to think that the generation that just sat on our steps, if they don't share the story of Jesus Christ, the church runs the risk of being no more. However, the good news is that for over 2,000 years, this faith and in Christ has moved forward. It has moved forward because of intentional relationship. Intentional relationship with God and with one another. And every person here this morning is a living testimony of that fact. You are here today because someone, somewhere, at some time, shared with you about the love of Jesus. Somewhere, sometime, someone, it might have been a mom, a dad, a grandparent, a Sunday school teacher, a neighbor, a friend, a co-worker, a pastor, but someone deemed it important enough in their life to share it in your life. Who thought it was so central in their way of living, they wanted to share it with you. And you know who that person or people are. Whoever it was, whoever they were, it was important to them. I want to share these words from C.S. Lewis. They're printed in the insert in your bulletin under the sermon outline. And I thought they were so profound, I wanted to print them out for you. Listen to what he says. And I will quote him. The only thing Christianity cannot be is moderately important. If Jesus is who he says he is, if he saved you from all your sins and did what he said he was going to do, if God's word is true, it deserves everything you've got. Not a piece of the pie along with career and hobbies, but the whole pie. If it's not true, then let's close up shop and go home and watch TV. We're just kidding ourselves. The only thing Christianity cannot be is moderately important. The casual Christian is a contradiction of terms. You're either passionate about loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, or you're not. End quote. Which brings me to the key question in the 20th chapter of Believe. I kind of changed the question. If you read the question in your book, I kind of changed the essence of the question this morning to this. Why is it so hard for us to share our faith? Why is that so tough? We spent the last few weeks talking about sharing our time, sharing our talents and treasures, and now today, sharing our testimony. So why is it so hard to share our faith? I think there are some obvious reasons. Some of those reasons might include your fear of past examples of people sharing their faith that rubbed you the wrong way. Whether it be standing on the street corner with a placard and a megaphone saying repent or die might have scared you. Maybe it's knocking on people's doors and handing them something and having the door close might have had something to do with it. Maybe it was your past experiences where you are less than effective and you were set up for failure and things just didn't work out real good. 
Maybe it was just good old-fashioned preaching, fire and brimstone, and your commission to save everyone every day. That might have played into it. But I want to share one more obscure reason why maybe we find it so hard to share our faith. And I call it this morning, the we're doing good enough syndrome. Look around. People are here. People coming through the doors all the time. We're doing all right. We're paying the bills. Things are happening. But we must hear the 10th chapter of Rome. It says Paul writes to the church of Rome and Paul writes to the church of Enwell these words. Everyone who calls help God gets help. Now I'm using the message translation in this one. I'm using the message translation because it spoke to me this week and I hope it will do with you also. Let me continue. But how can people call for help if they don't know who to trust? And how can they know who to trust if they haven't heard of the one who can be trusted? How can they hear if nobody tells them? And how is anyone going to tell them unless someone is sent to do it? This is why Scripture exclaims a sight to take your breath away. Grand processions of people telling all the good things of God. Does it take your breath away? Grand processions of people telling of the good things of God. Because friends, here's the truth. The majority of people outside these walls who are hurting, who are hopeless, who do not know God, who do not have a loving, living relationship with Jesus Christ, in this community will never, will never step in through those doors. They just won't. And that's the truth. That's why Scripture says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So I want to talk about the key idea in the 20th chapter this morning that makes this proclamation... I share my faith to fulfill God's purposes. Now, if you remember back in chapter 9 of Believe, we talked about the church. And the church, we learned, is the primary way in which God fulfills God's purposes so that we, being the church, can share our story. But how do you do it? How do you share your faith. I just want to spend a few moments this morning giving us some handles as to how we can share our faith. And it starts here. The first thing we need to do is we need to be looking for divine appointments. Because God is putting us in places to share our faith all the time. Whether we know it or not. Pray in the morning when you get up to be used. Pray for the unknown. Pray for the uncertain. Pray for the seemingly insignificant. And pray for significance, meaning, and worth. And I'm going to go out on the limb and say, do it right here. You know, so often Sunday morning is a ritual. Some of you, your cars drive you here without even driving them. It's just what you do. You are here. You are present. But I'll tell you something. I will guarantee that if we're looking, God is using you for a divine appointment this morning. That someone needs your story. Someone needs your hug. Someone needs a high five. Someone needs to know they are important in your eyes and in God's eyes. Someone needs you. You can come and slink in and slink out. But 
But right now there is a divine appointment waiting for you. And all of us need to have these words from the sixth chapter of Ephesians written on our hearts. They say this, Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. We share our faith when we look for divine appointments. That God's going to put us in situations. But secondly, let that divine appointment lead us to listen. To listen to whom God has appointed to you. And what do I mean by listen? Be willing to show up. Be attentive. Be quiet. Be present with the two ears and silence the one mouth. Let me take you back to after we shared the first hymn and I shared a video. That was a little edgy. She was a little in our face. That's why I showed it. Because the question is, when will it be time? And that video challenges our willingness to merely listen and then wait for the Holy Spirit to move us to speak. You see, that's the dilemma. We listen so we might be invited to share. Now think about that. So many times evangelism and sharing our story and our faith blows up in our face because we haven't been invited to share it. We just share it. We have to be invited to make sure that we share the story, which is the third thing that we do. We, we pray for a divine appointment so that we might listen to be invited to do what? Share our story. We must witness what we have witnessed. And I believe that this is the main reason we do not share our faith. We either think our story isn't worth sharing, or we've never been open as to how God has been working in our lives. Folks, you have a story. I have a story. We all have a story. What is it? The world is waiting to hear it. Share our story as to how God has been working in our lives. That's it. But I might want to say also that as you share your story, as you pray to be used, as you listen, as you're invited to share, do this. Have a hat trick of scriptures ready. I thought it was hockey season. I thought that was appropriate. <laughs> Have a hat trick of scriptures that mean something to you. Now, I'm not saying that's when you whip open the Bible. And three verbatim. I'm saying have three, two, three, four passages that mean something to you. That you can share as you're sharing your story. I'll give you my three. Psalm 46. The Lord is my help and my refuge. A very poignant help in times of trouble. Be still and know that I am God. That's Psalm 46, verse 1, verse 10. It's not the way it's written, and I don't know 2 through 9. That's okay. It speaks to me. That God is my refuge and my strength, and I need to be still and know that. You don't need to memorize it. I'm a terrible memorizer. I'd rather have it in my heart. Romans 8, 37 through 39 tells me that I'm more than a conqueror. And that nothing in life or in death, not angels or demons or principalities, nothing in life can separate me from the love of God. Is that what it says verbatim? I don't know. That's what it says in my heart. 1 John 4. 1 John 4 says, love one another. Because love comes from God. And if you do not love one another, you do not know God. And how 
do we know this love? That Jesus died on a cross and rose again. So love one another and make God's love complete. Is that what 1 John 4 actually says? Yeah, yeah. Kinda. Have your hat trick ready. Have something in Scripture that speaks to you. Pray for a divine appointment so that you might be called to listen. And when invited, share. And finally, invite. Invite. You see, friends, acceptance is not our responsibility, but the invitation certainly is. We are about planting seeds and not about the harvest. We are called to look, listen, and share when invited to share our faith. Let me ask you a question as I ask it of myself. When was the last time I invited anyone to worship? When was the last time I was open to look, listen, and share with someone that I could invite to this? Right here. Church growth is not complicated. How many of you are on Facebook? Hey, you're in church. Don't lie. How many of you are on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> I get a kick out of Facebook at times when I go through there and there's these little these little sayings maybe you've seen them there's these little sayings like um, the nine things pastor do to blow up churches the eight things that lay people should never do when they do it in their church you know those kinds of things <laughs> church growth is not complicated if you and I like, invite one other person because we pray for a divine appointment, we listen, we were invited to share, and we invited. If every one of us invited one other person, we double. <laughs> Whew, that's complicated. No, it's not. It's simple. We're called to invite those whom God has placed in our paths. We're called to listen to their struggle. And if they invite you, share in their pain. Share your story, which includes an invitation to this. To strength and hope and peace and meaning and love. We're about the invitation God takes care of the salvation. I end this. We have just spent the last ten weeks talking about what are we to do Based on the previous 10 weeks, what are we to believe? So what are we supposed to do? Worship. Pray. Study the Bible. Be single-minded. Surrender. Be a part of a biblical community. Share our spiritual gifts, our time, our resources, and our faith. Next Sunday, we begin our last 10 weeks of the Believe Journey, which says this, based on what we believe, based on what we do, what are we becoming? I invite you and all those you will be looking for this week and touching their lives, as you listen, as you share this week to this holy journey of belief. Let us pray. Wonderful God, we are to tell people about Jesus. We are to share what Jesus has done in our lives. There are so many people searching for hope, purpose, meaning, love. Give us the strength, the willingness, the zeal, and the passion 
to open ourselves up this week, to risk a little bit for Jesus as we share our faith, as we look for those holy moments, as we listen and once invited, we share so that we might invite them into your kingdom in heaven as it is on earth. Lord God, we thank you for this holy privilege of being called the church, your disciples of Jesus Christ. In whose name we pray now and forever. Amen.